on the four personality types that we generally come across. Now, all of these attributes that I'm assigning to these four basic personality types can be found in anybody and everybody. What you're trying to do is determine what, how would they make decisions. Some people you have to ask how they feel about something, and some people you have to ask what they think about something. Because you go to some person and you'll say, what do you think? And they'll be like, uh. And then you say, well, how do you feel? And oh, they'll go on and on, and vice versa. So we're going to take a blank piece of paper, and we're going to cut it into four pieces like this. So you're going to cut it into four, okay? And on the top of the page, we're going to put a D here, an I here, an S here, and a C here. So you're going to put a D, I, S, C, like that. Okay? And then next to D, well, we'll get to that in a minute. And the guy's name on his birth certificate is Robert Smith. Okay? So first we're going to start with the letter C. Okay? Now, people under the C are conservative type people. Okay? Um, we're going to determine how to discern these people by the way they act, dress, and what their office looks like, etc. So if you come across a C personality, and their favorite word is um, functional, okay? Their favorite word is functional. So how would somebody who is functional be dressed? At work, business casual? They typically, you know, have a collared shirt, uh, loafers. Back in my day, when I was younger, it was easy to find them because they usually had pocket protectors. Mm. Okay? <laughs> So yeah, they're going to be dressed very functionally, you know, a collared shirt um, and, you know, shoes they can slip on, you know, easy and functional. C's aren't really people people, okay? It's an us versus them kind of attitude that they have. So it's us versus them, okay? And so you want to make it seem like when you're talking to a C that you're on the same team, okay? Now, if you were lucky enough to go into their office, what do you think would be on their walls? Their achievements? No. It's got to be functional. What would be on their walls? A clock. A clock and a calendar. That's it. You won't find any pictures. <laughs> their walls will be bare otherwise. <laughs> and they're going to have huge desks. Since he's a simple, functional kind of guy and his name is Robert, what do you think Robert would like to be called? How is he going to introduce himself? My name is... Rob. No, oh, Bob. Oh. Rob's a little boy. He'll be, another, he'll be another letter. Bob. And he may shake your hand. He may not. Okay. These people are very analytical. They will read it every single word in your contract. And they will come, when they say, oh, I gotta read the contract first, they do. And they'll get back to you with a million questions <laughs> about the contract and all the verbiage inside of it. What does this mean? And can you change that? <laughs> and all these things. So what kind of industry do you think would attract a C personality? You try in. Lawyer. Right. <clears throat> Attorneys, CPAs, Computer guys, you know, IT guys, stuff like that. Um, people that, you know, where they find their, their the basics, you know, with numbers and, and things like that. Now, attorneys might also end up in other categories as well, depending on, you know, because you have to look for their personality type. But with a, with a C, the people on the bottom of this thing are slow decision makers. And the people on the left of this uh, quadrant are... All of them only want facts. Okay? The, team, the people at the top of the quadrant are quick decision makers. They're fast decision makers. And the people on the right want a relationship. So right now, your paper should look something like this. You got your D, your I, your S, and your C. We've described the D. We've got your uh, slow decision makers, your fast decision makers. Um, people who just want facts and the people who just want relationships. Well, not just, but you need relationships in order to make a sale. Um, and so with the C, they're really slow decision makers. And that's the bitch of it because they are. 
<laughs> they kind of, they really want to know all the facts and it's, you know, the only way you can cozy up to the seas, taking on an us versus them. I'm going to make you look good. I'm going to make this easy for you. I'm going to make this functional for you. All the words that turn them on. Okay? So are we clear on a C? Now, if you're not entirely sure, because sometimes you don't get to meet them in their office or in their environment, typically a C's favorite color is green. Not always. About 75% of the time. A C will tell you what their favorite color is green. So do you recommend asking them what their favorite color is? Yeah, sometimes if you're not sure, you can go, oh, that's, that's a nice uh, green shirt, or that's a nice blue shirt. Is that your favorite color? No, no, my favorite color is green. You know, whatever. You know, you know how to casually bring up information like that. Absolutely. So now we're going to go to the S's. The S's are hippies. <laughs> okay? They live in love. They're all about the relationship. With that being said, what would Robert want to call himself if, when he introduces himself? <clears throat> Robbie. Robbie, that's right. And he'll hug you. He's a hugger. Everybody hugs Robbie. Robbie's really, everybody loves Robbie. They're really artsy fartsy people. So how do you think that they dress? Flip-flops. Yeah, loose clothing, flip-flops, lots of colors, lots of colors. Colors, colors, colors. They may not even wear, they may wear three or four different colors. If you walked into their office, what would you expect their walls to look like? Music, color, color, color. Pictures of everything and everyone. Pictures of their neighbor's cat. I'm talking pictures everywhere. Okay. You're going to have pictures everywhere. More than likely, their favorite color is yellow. So you meet with Robbie, and he's a real slow decision maker. Typically, <laughs> if you find a business owner that's a yellow or an S, there's typically a partner. If they're a successful business, there's a partner who's probably a D. Okay? So you meet with an S, you might want to say, oh, so where's your partner? Okay. Um, what kind of businesses do you think an, an S would be in? Small businesses? Yeah. Music, flower shop, that's not necessarily small businesses. Well, yeah. Artsy fartsy types of businesses. That's typically the type of industry that, that those people attract. Okay? And if they're constantly complaining about their business and their cash flow, maybe they are in business for themselves. Because they're poor decision makers. They'll make a decision based strictly on relationship. So in other words, uh, there were a time when I did a business to consumer product and I would visit people in their homes. And if I determined that the yellow is the decision maker, uh, the head decision maker, I would stop talking about whatever I was selling and just sit and chat with them and maybe have a beer with them if it was a Friday night or something. And we chat for an hour or two and all of a sudden they go, you know, I like you. All right, so what can we do for $50 a month or oh, whatever, okay? Um, they, it's, it's all about the relationship with these guys. Now remember, the man is the head and the woman is the neck. And whatever way the head turns, that's the way the neck is going. Okay, so you can have a husband who's a C and a wife who's an S. And oh my God, you're going to be there forever. Get them to make a decision because they're both slow decision makers. <laughs> so, so if you're in a home with a C and an S, okay, you're going to be meta very matter of fact with the C and you're going to make relationship with the S. And you're going to mix the conversation back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you want to touch the S. You want to touch them as much as possible. They love, they're really touchy-feely people. Like for a C, if you sat down at anywhere, they'll sit on the other side. But an S, they will sit right next to you. They would sit on your lap if you let them. Or vice versa. Okay. And treat it as such. And I'll give you a, a, a little example. There was a, a, an Indian couple that I went to go visit. And the husband was a C, and she was an S, and she was chasing the kids all around the house. I saw her like two minutes at a time. She'd be running through the living room chasing a kid. And I would make nice with her when I said, oh, you want me to catch him? You know, and I'd get along with her, and I'd pat her on the back. And I just made nice, nice with the lady, and I gave him all the facts. And at the end of it, when I closed him, he goes into the other room where she is with the kids, 
and said probably, what do you think? And she said, oh, I like it, go ahead. And he came and he said, yeah, my wife likes you, let's go ahead and do this. Okay? And that was a lucky thing because typically when you have two people like that, well, actually he was probably more closer to a D. But uh, <laughs> you're with your C's and your S's, you're going to have to spend time with them. Okay? You're going to be investing a lot of time. Are we, do we have any questions so far on those two personality types? Okay. Now we're going to go to the eyes. And your eyes are fun. Eyes are, are, are typically salespeople because they're fun or they think what they're doing is fun. I, I know an I who sells tires, he thinks selling tires is fun. <laughs> okay? But other than that, what type of industries do you think you would find somebody who is fun? Right. Bars, restaurants, things like that. Or they're salespeople. What do you think an I calls himself? Awesome. Bobby. Okay. Um, he loves the word we, us, the team. Okay, so you, when you talk to him, it's you talk. You, 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 it's always all of us, and you're part of that. You, you, you know, whatever if whatever company you're sitting in front of, that you're part of that deal. Okay? They're quick decision makers, but they do have to feel good about you. They have to like you to do business with you. Okay? They will have um, some pictures on their wall, but not a ton of them. You know, they'll have a picture of their family, uh, maybe uh, uh, the baseball team that they coach or something like that. Uh, because you know, they are personal people. They, they do like people, but they're not as extravagant and out there as your S's would be. They do dress well, but they dress colorfully. And everybody loves Bobby. He's awesome. All of his employees love him. And he loves the word love, too, by the way. Or she. But since we're dealing with Robin Smith. What color do you think an eye is a favorite color for eye? Orange. And they're lots of fun, and they're easy to get along with, and they'll come right up to you, and they'll shake your hand, and put the other hand on your shoulder, and give you the double-handed shake, stuff like that. They'll be smiling. They're easy to pick out. Your eyes and your S's smile a lot, so they're easy to pick out, easier to pick out. And then, depending on how much sense they have, um, an S won't ask you so many questions, because they don't know what to ask. Eyes will ask questions, so they're going to want some facts, and they're going to want some relationship there. Okay? And then we get to the D's. D's are very self-involved people. Back when I was younger, it was easy to catch a D because he would say, my name is Mr. Smith. <laughs> he would say Mr. or Miss or Mrs. in front of their name. But nowadays, it would be Robert. And he would say very clearly, Robert. Do you like to be called Robert? Yes, Robert. Okay. He's one of the best dressed person in the room. Their favorite word is I. Imagine that. <laughs> so what do you think they would have on their walls? Yeah, degrees, trophies, things like that. So you'll find a lot of doctors. You'll find some attorneys here and very successful businessmen, entrepreneurs, stuff like that. Okay, because they're quick decision makers. They don't have to like you to do business with you. Okay, so you, you, their very, very, very favorite word when you meet with a D is bottom line. So when you sit down with a D, for the, the very first time you sit down with them, you'd say, Robert, I'm not here to waste your time. I know it's extremely valuable, so I'm going to bottom line this whole deal for you. You now have his attention, or her attention. Bottom line, I mean, you're going to make this short and simple, and then do so. Don't get wordy. Keep it to the facts. Just tell them what they're supposed to hear. So one of my favorite uh, sales stories to talk, tell is I went to go meet with this very famous pod podiatrist here in Houston. I was selling copiers. And he had a copier in his office, and it was working fine, but it was very old, 
and, and, and so I could get him into a newer, a newer model cheaper. Okay, but that wasn't so much of his concern because obviously this is he's a very busy uh, doctor, so he didn't want to have his stuff down and have to teach everybody unless it made sense to him. So I, his, our meeting was at 12. I was there at a quarter to 12. At 12:05 they bring me into his office. At 12:15 he comes into his office and says, "Okay, Susan, you got two minutes. Why do I want a new copier?" I said, "Well, here's the thing." Your copier is old. The parts are becoming discontinued. If it breaks down, there's a good chance that we may not be able to fix it. I could get you a cheaper one. It's $50 a month less. You said done and signed the paperwork, and that's exactly how that went down. You gotta love these. You'll be in and out. You, you just gotta love them. And typically, their favorite color is red. Pay attention to people. A lot of people think I'm an eye because I'm in sales, so I, I have this bubbly, outgoing relationship personality. Yes, as a salesperson, because I'm at when I'm trying to sell you. Okay, but when you're trying to sell me, pay attention. Trophies, trophies. Okay, you're trying to sell me. I don't need the relationship as much as I need to make sure I'm making a good business decision. Right. And bottom line it for me, because I am really busy. And if you bottom line it and it makes sense to me, I'll do it. Okay, if it's in my budget, stuff like that. That's a a short training on disc chains. Does that make any sense to you guys? Yep. Does it make does it help a little bit? So like so now since we're dealing on a business to consumer level, remember you're typically gonna have two personalities in one room. So pay attention to your personality types and who you're making a relationship and who you're not. Okay. Always shake the woman's hand first, no matter what. It shows a lot of respect, if nothing else. Okay, and I promise you, when it comes to the home, the woman is the final decision maker most of the time. Okay, and she'll pick the colors and all that kind of stuff, and he'll just decide if this makes financial sense to them or not. Okay, and then if you have an I and an S, then you're gonna have a lot of fun. They will be a blast to hang out with. Okay, and then like I said, and then and you'll get best decision makers, as long as one of them is an, a D or an I, you'll get them to sign right away. If you got a C in the nest, they're going to sit and hum and haw. And so you need to sit and hum and haw with them. Give the C the contract, let him read it, while you and the, and the S are sitting there just chatting about whatever, you know, they got a dog, they got a brand new HDTV, or you know, whatever. She's cooking something that smells delicious, what's the recipe, things like that. Does that make sense to you guys? That's pretty good sales training, isn't it? And that's the short version. We can go into a longer version another time.